isn't it possible this geopolitical event could drag out a lot longer than what we're, we've seen in, in the last 30 years or so and could be uh, material to the global economy? It certainly seems that way. You know, the, the, the one word that keeps coming up in my conversations with investors is stagflation. Uh, they're saying this looks a little stagflationary. There are concerns out there that economic growth later this year could soften at a time when inflation is running so, so hot. Prices were already at a 40-year high, and then we had a price shock on top of that with oil prices above $120 a barrel. You know, wheat prices recording their biggest one-week gain since the 1950s, at least. Corn prices surging. So we've had this incredible price shock at a time when inflation is already running so hot, and that's concerning. Sylvia, if, if investors discounted every possible black swan event, you'd probably never be in, in the market. But there, there, it, it does seem sometimes that we're whistling, oh, I don't want to use that term whistling past the graveyard, but it, it does seem like we're Pollyannish in, in terms of if you stay long and don't change anything here, aren't you ignoring the possibility of, of what, what uh, can happen? Do worst case scenarios just never happen anymore, Sylvia? We had a two year pandemic that, that wasn't supposed to be possible. Yeah, good morning, and, and that's a great point. I, I think that the geopolitics that we're seeing right now are just very difficult to navigate, and it's tough to make decisions in a market like this. But, and, you know, everything in, in the past is sort of not exactly as it is today with Russia and Ukraine, right? But if you look at past wars, you do see that, you know, when things came to an end past ceasefire, those years ended up being up 10 percent or so. So in the short term, you know, we definitely can't be Pollyanna-ish, but you have a few options, right? If you have cash on the sideline, um, and, you know, you're looking for that cash to grow and invest it somewhere, it, leaving it in cash with inflation at these rates is just taking a loss, right? So you do have opportunities in the market. But on the other hand, if you're fully invested, um, if you don't need that cash, you probably are best to ride this out. And, and it's, it's a tough call, right, because we can't predict what's going to happen in the future with Ukraine and Russia how long it'll last. But before this, you know, we had excellent jobs numbers. We have an economy that looked to be recovering. If this doesn't go on for too long, I think we get back to those bright spots. You know, if it does, then of course, it's going to be a drag and that, that wait to sort of get your, you know, investments back, your cash back in hand with, with an improved sort of, you know, position is going to be a longer wait. So you would be, at this point, if you had cash, you'd be uh, strategic? And in, in at, at times you saw things you'd like, you'd go ahead and put it to work. I would. If I think about what's going on here, you know, you have NASDAQ near correction territory. So you have the, the FANGs, which are sort of, sort of very well capitalized. You know, we'll probably expect big buybacks. Um, companies like Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, you know, I talk about them often. But 30 percent plus growth in cloud, close to 40 percent, actually. Um, net profits, 47 percent for Apple. Those companies are very much on sale. And if you think about what's going on now and in infrastructure spending that we were trying to get past before, I think 5G is going to be an important topic. And the reason for that is that, you know, now the U.S. and globally, you know, we sort of see this need to have instant data from sensors, from targets, from um, signaling and things like that. I mean, this, this Russia-Ukraine situation just reminds us, you know, how much we need to invest in technology. And then that touches semiconductors, that touches communications, you know, towers, um, REITs that, that sort of provide that infrastructure. So I do think that there are spots where you can go in that are better than sitting in cash and, and sort of having inflation impact your portfolio in a negative way.